Greetings viewers, my name is Olben Moyo. I was given this name by my dad after they had known a certain man who was teaching at a local school. He was Mr. Olben, so they decided to give me that name. So that's where I got that name from. So my name is Olben Moyo and uh, I was born in Kokwe. Uh, I grew up in Kokwe, uh, where I lived with my parents, my mom and my dad. So my parents were, they belonged to Seventh-day Adventist Church. That's where they were worshipping. And as a young boy, it happened that uh, I followed the principles of my dad and my mom, that I should as well be in church. But um, at that time, it was honestly meaningless to me. Yes, they were members of uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Gokwe. And that's where I grew up. I used to head cattle. I grew up in the rural areas. Uh, we used to plow in the fields. So that was the life really. Mm, okay. Uh, can you tell us more about uh, your background? When I was growing up, there were a lot of things that were happening. You know, as a young boy, you like entertainment. Out, uh, I used to love football because I played football in the A team at school from a class of, of grade three. So at the same time, it happened that I was supposed to be at church. I did like church because I was a singer. I used to sing tenor within the choir. I used to sing in a quartet, so that when I grew up, those were some of the things that kept me visiting the church, but I was not very, very committed, because it never meant anything in my life. There was nothing that I, I would say this was a, a true a worship, but I was just a visitor at church, and be, being entertained as a youth member, joining uh, AY, going to KKM meetings and etc. So they were, there was nothing much really, but I was in a church where people were worshipping, but I wasn't doing anything at all. Mm. So I, I understand that uh, when you were a young boy, you had a night vision when you were asleep. We are very much interested to hear about the experience in this vision. Oh, there you come again. Uh, it happened, uh, I think I was around six years. Mm -hmm. This vision, I've never forgotten of it. But uh, at that time when I had it, I never knew what it meant. Uh, when I was about to start school, uh, I used to live with my grandmother from my mother's side. And she was a Christian. So as a young boy, uh, when, I was, when I'm asleep, I was not able to keep blankets over me to cover myself so that I'm warm. So it happened that my grandmother opted that I should sleep with her. So we're sharing the same blankets with my grandmother so that he, she could help me to cover me when, uh, when I would have thrown blankets away when it is cold. Mm -hmm. So it happened on a particular night, which I remember vividly, I had a vision of uh, the sun, the moon, and the stars. And uh, these, uh, these three things were surrounding me. I was sleeping in between the moon and the star, the, the moon and the sun, and the stars were surrounding me. And while these two hours sleeping, uh, my grandmother had me, but I never knew what was happening. My grandmother had me praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come up to the end. And when I came to Amen, she could realize that I was fast asleep. And you know when somebody's asleep, at times it makes a sound to show that this person is asleep. Uh, she never woke me up at that time. And we got up early morning, she was surprised. And then she called me. She said, Alban, can you come here? Can you pray the Lord's Prayer? And uh, it was to my surprise that uh, 
she, what she was asking me, I never knew about it. And I said, I don't know the Lord's Prayer. She tried to lead me from our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, but I could only follow when she's leading me. When she, when she keeps quiet, I, I, I knew nothing about it. And then she said, but you prayed this prayer while you still asleep. And then I said to her, no, uh, Granny, I did not pray, but that night I was sleeping in between the moon and the sun, and I was surrounded by the stars. Oh, well, this was a surprise. And this was so vivid in my mind that I never forgot it. But as I grew, because I never knew what it meant, I never put it into, into consideration. This is what I had when I was at, at, at the age of six. Wow. This is so wonderful to hear. And uh, so, when from that age, uh, after school, when you finished school, do you want to tell us about when you finished school and your first job? Um, right. I, I went to school like any other child. Um, then after school, my ambition, um, I wanted to be a police officer. Then I went to join the, the police force. I was trained at Harare and I was posted in a number of areas. I worked in Tepeleland South. I worked at Mziligazi as a police officer, as an investigating officer. I worked at Mpilo. I worked with one, with one of the senior pathologists in Matebelen and uh, South, in Matebelen North and South as a whole. But during this time, I was a footballer. I used to play football a lot. I was a right back, a defender. I could be a striker, a libero. So that was my sport. And uh, I played, I never played for Premier League within the country, which was Super League by then. Uh, I only I played only once as in inner first division team. Then I, was, I came back to second division all my life, of which second division was only two steps, one step in between it before you get to Premier League. So I used to play football. That's how I lived. And during that time, I never had. I, I was not a drinker, I did not smoke, but um, all what I enjoyed was entertainment. And about Christianity, by the time I left my family, coming to live my own life, uh, being independent, I never went to church. I even forgot the principles which were given to me by my parents. I never even visited Seventh-day Adventist Church. So that's some of the things that I did. Mm -hmm. What, how did you become a musician? Right. During the time uh, when I was a, a police officer, there came a time that I, I got interest into music. Uh, there was a group, a very professional group within the country, Black Umfolosi. I approached them. They accepted me. I was enrolled in as a solo artist. And they taught me music. I recorded my first album. And it was uh, Imfundo, and it was being played on Zimbabwe television, so I became a little bit popular. And then from there, I toured this world, um, been to this, uh, to been to Britain, played in it a number of big venues. So Black and Follows uh, taught me music. So after a time that I was able to write my own music, but uh, what happened was. Uh, when Black Mfolosi accepted me to join the group as a solo artist, they required me to write a 10-track album, which I did and recorded it, and one of the songs was videoed, and it was highly used on children's programs in the country. Wow, wow. So, uh, what are the other achievements uh, during your time? In music. I went further, I then recorded um, another album in, uh, in Britain, uh, in uh, Bridgewater, which was recorded at, um, in Tonto town. Mm -hmm. And then I recorded another album in Newcastle, Get His Head. And then from then, it happened that by the time I came into music, into, into, I became a Christian, then I recorded a gospel song. A gospel album. Uh, uh, how did you end up in England? 
Well, like like anybody else, I migrated to England. I just wanted to come and settle here, and I was um, I was uh, I had that advantage to come here and, and live in the country. Mm -hmm. My children are here. Yeah, um, my wife is here, and everybody's here, so we are happy at home. Okay, so. Were you still a Christian? Not at all. This one is a very good subject. Not at, I was not a Christian. You know, I lived a, a, a funny life. Uh, I must be very honest with you, brother, and hopefully you as a listener, this will help you. When I joined the police force, when I joined uh, music, I then became a drunkard. I started to drink beer. Uh, my favorite beer was Cronenberg and uh, well into beer and even ventured at some points when I'm too drunk I would venture into cigarettes but I never took any drug but I would buy Lambert and then have my beer so that was the life that I experienced and during this time I, I would make I could make money but that money will never uh, remain with me it would just go away just just like that and I wonder but I make money at, I used to do workshops within the country in Britain mm -hmm. whereby I was paid 700 pounds from uh, 9 o'clock to quarter past 3 afternoon but by the end of the week I'll be having no penny and I wondered what was happening and I, it went, I went further uh, I had what you may call heart palpitations and every time I went to the doctor, the doctor would tell me I've got heart palpitations. I never knew what it meant. At, at times, I could not sleep at night. At times, uh, I would only sleep maybe for two hours. Uh, maybe at times my mind would be pondering on things, picking this and that, debating, answering myself. And I thought it was just normal life. And uh, at times uh, I would have uh, weird dreams, uh, weird dreams, to find myself in a dark pit, trying to climb off or trying to come out. I fail and I wonder. At times I, I dream myself fighting people in the middle of the night and I wonder what is, what type of a dream is this? At times I see snakes. I see them at night, but to me it never meant anything. It was just general light. And there were a lot of things. At times I would hear sharp pains in my body. Uh, and it would only come at a particular time, but not always. And I would wonder, what is all this? And uh, I never, I was a very fit man. Uh, but failing in all things, in everything that I try to explore, mm -hmm. I will go halfway and all of a sudden it cuts off. At times, in a particular year towards September, I remember that very well, towards September, something will happen in my life. Or maybe if, even if I put together some money that uh, this is what I have, all of a sudden something crops up and that money is gone. I never succeeded in the life that I lived, although I was once a police officer and I, was, I became a musician, taught England, uh, and even though in all those things nothing ever, I was, I was, I was never su successful in anything really. So, um, wow, this is very interesting. So what were your experiences in this life and what made you need Jesus? I never wanted Jesus. I never wanted Jesus. I never thought of going to church. And I never believed that this thing, this statement about Jesus is real. You know, when you have got science, biology, chemistry, mix and match in your brain, there are a lot of things that you may think about. And uh, even when, when people are speaking to you, it doesn't make sense. So what was happening was, I, the, I had two friends. I, it happened that I, I lived in Manchester, so I had two friends. Uh, these friends, two gentlemen, and these two gentlemen were very close to me. 
So they would invite me, come to church. So I would tell them, no, me, I belong to Seventh-day Seventh Adventist Church. So every time they would invite them, finally I did ask them, where do you worship? They said, no, we are worshiping at one of, uh, there is an, a Pentecostal church, but it is, an, it, it is in an apostolic doctrine. So I said, no, 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 me, I don't join these churches. Me, I belong to Seventh-day Adventist. Even though for years I had abandoned Seventh-day Adventist church when I was still in my mother's hands, in my dad's hands, I never did anything. So it took them three months. These two men, they both are residents of Manchester even now. So it took them three months to convince me, but I was never convinced. At one point, they took me to a, one of the retailers' shop. I think it's Asda. They said, no, let's visit Asda. There is a, we want, let's go for shopping. Yet they knew that they were taking me to the pastor of a church where they were inviting me to. So when we got there, I thought we were going for a shopping. Then all of a sudden, I see a tall guy coming to me, greeting me. Hello, Brother Moyo. I hear you are, you are, you are singing with Black Um Falosi. Ah, we are inviting you to church. And then I looked at his face, and I said to him, Look here, brother. Me, I'm a worshiper at Seventh-day Adventist Church. So thank you very much. I met a U10. I never even wanted to listen even to the second one. So I went off. So my friends were surprised. So they had lost hope one or the other. So it happened that uh, one weekend they went to Wells to visit Wells because they had a friend who was being ordained in Wells. So I was left alone in Manchester. No friends now. I just felt lonely. In the fridge, I had four beers, Cronenberg, which, were, which I was hoping to drink at some time when they will have frozen right. So it happened that when I, on a Sunday morning, I couldn't drink. I just felt lonely. Then phoned one of the uh, uh, brothers whom I knew. They said, yes, do you want to, go to come to church? I said, yes, I'm ready to come to church. Said, okay, come and pick us. Do you drive? Yes, I drive. Hey, okay, they took me to Longside. So I went to visit their church during their absence. So I was Mr. Jeans. I would wear jeans all over. And I did dreadlocks about 12 pleats here, which were being pleated in a funny way. I was a quarter raster, maybe I will call it. So I went to this church. And this church was called Gate of Heaven. That was another Sunday to me because when I went there with my jeans, with my dreadlock, I sat right at the back. I never wanted to participate. The reason of me going to this church, I wanted just company to fulfill the day because my friends were in Wales. Uh, little did I know, then preaching started. I listened to the preaching. I can't even remember what they were preaching about, singing some songs, some of the songs that I knew long, long ago. So I joined them. Then it happened that the service finished. Then I drove back home. I slept. Now there comes a scenario. When I got home, I went to, I went to bed. Uh, for the first time I slept, I think that was around half past six. And I got up the following day at almost half past eleven. I was even late at work. I had, even no, I had not known that it was even morning. Then I got up and picked up the phone and then phoned the, the, the workplace. I said, oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm not feeling well. And they said, no, we know you have never been absent from work, so you will come tomorrow. Now I started to scratch my head. What type of a church is this which has caused me to sleep such long hours, which I've never done for years? Then I thought, no, 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 let me go back. I went to your church. They said, ah, oh, is that true? I said, yes. They said, what happened? I said, but what type of a church is this? Because I went there, I only slept two hours, maybe 30 minutes, but I slept from half past six until half past 11 the following day, and I did not even go to work. They said, ah, oh, this is an apostolic doctrine. Don't you know? I never knew what they meant with that. 
the next coming Sunday, I wanted to go back. My four beers were still kept in the fridge. They were still in the fridge. So I went back to church next Sunday. I had to cut off those, those braids. And I had only one suit. And so I put on my suit and my one pair of shoes because I was Mr. Jeans. So I went to church. Now I started to understand certain things. Oh, and I could feel in me being so relieved. And then continuous like that, I then stayed in church. And since then, I never left the church. Wow, wow, this is powerful. Can you tell us about how Jesus delivered you and from what? Right, deliverance. Now, while Lister was in church, still under gate of heaven, this church was called gate, on he gate of heaven church, uh, apostolic church in Manchester. The pastor there, with his authority, uh, his pastor uh, K. Masu, Kaulisa Masu. This man is a humble man. What he did, he taught me something. He said, forgive. I can see you cannot forgive, but the Lord wants to use you. I had other things. I had lost a lot in my life, so I never thought there is reality that one could come back into life. So it happened in one of the Sundays that I went to church. Church, it already started. I just felt in me, no, 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 I must go away. Then I drove away about half a mile. Then it came again to my mind. Why am I running away from church today? No, no, no. So the pastor would ask me, I saw your car and now you have driven away. Why? So I went back, went into the church. In me, I was telling myself, today nobody's going to pray for me. <laughs> I was telling myself, nobody's going to pray for me. I, why and where that mind was coming from, I don't know. So I had to sit on an unusual chair a little bit back. So, altar call time came. I was called to the altar. I refused. Then one brother... He summoned me, said, Brother Moyo, come to the pulpit. I then nodded my head and said, no, but he was just nodding to show him that I'm not coming there. I didn't know what was happening. Then all of a sudden, I saw two men coming to me who had been summoned to come to me. I don't know by who. And the pastor, Kaolisa Masugu, was there. So these two men, one got hold of me on the right hand in a gentle way. And one got hold of me on my left hand in a very gentle way. They asked me, let's walk forward, brother. I just responded. Went to the altar call. When we got to the altar call, uh, Pastor Masugu came. And he started praying for me. The last time that I saw was when Pastor approached me. And when he approached me, I, knew, I saw him lifting his hand, laying it on my forehead. And the next thing, I don't know what happened. But later on, I discovered that my tie was twisted. Ah, no shoes. My trousers were twisted. And I was a little bit in shambles. And I was a little bit uh, embarrassed. So I went back to sit. And then uh, I didn't know what had happened. Then the pastor said to me, Brother Moyo, can I see you privately? The Lord has, uh, has touched you. So that's when he sat down with me privately and then he told me that God has delivered you. There was the kingdom of darkness in you. In particular, I had the demons. Uh, I do not know where they came from. And I had ancestral spirits. My grandfather, my grandmother, and others whom I don't even, I never even met them. I never even saw my grandfather. I never even saw my grandmother. And these things were in me. And the day I was delivered, I was even asking some of the friends, guys, what was happening to me? And everybody never wanted to speak to me to tell me what was happening. So I was delivered. Soon after deliverance, I never experienced uh, nightmares. I never saw snakes. 
either being oppressed whilst I'm in bed, fighting, trying to get up, trying to kick, but or maybe trying to run away, heart palpitations all of a sudden went off, sharp pains which are coming on my body suddenly went off, the back ache which was on me suddenly went off. I used to have a, a very severe headache, very severe headache. But all of a sudden, everything went, and I started to feel relief so light. I became lighter and lighter, a public man so friendly. So that's the time then I started to write a gospel uh, song, a gospel album uh, with a group called Voice of Angels, which I assembled within Gate of Heaven Church. Wow. Wow. This is powerful. This is powerful. So, I, I want to hear more about this, you know, can, can you tell us uh, how you were called into the ministry and when was that? Right, when I was called in the ministry, this is another scenario. I think now because I'm a Christian, I started to rewind back the sun and the moon and the stars where I was sleeping when I was at six years old, when I was sleeping with my grandmother. My, my grandmother heard me praying the Lord's Prayer, but all what I remember with that vision was the sun, the moon, and the stars, and I was sleeping in between the moon and the, uh, and the, and the sun. Now, while I was in the ministry, I never had the actual understanding of what a calling is. People who speak about, ah, God will use you to me, it never made any sense because I never knew what it meant. It happened that, uh, that was 2009 when I was uh, worshipping in the Gate of Heaven branch in Bedford. While we were in Bedford, we were a choir, uh, voice of Angels group which I had assembled. So we're singing one of the songs uh, which says, Oh Lord, hear my prayer, listen to my cry for mercy in your faithfulness and righteousness. Come to me, oh Lord. So when we were on the chorus, Oh Lord, I heard you speaking to my heart. Something caught me while I was standing in front of the congregation. Pastor Kaulisa Masu was sitting there. Uh, elders were sitting there. So something caught me, which I cannot describe, not to any other person. Something uh, caught me and I was caught up. I don't know what happened. But all what I could hear, I could hear the choir which I was singing with, repeating the same chorus continuously, continuously. At the same time, I could hear from a distance as if these people were at a very, very far distance. And this, I could hear a sound of a screaming voice, which means there were some people within the congregation who were screaming or maybe crying, I would, I would, I would say so. Why they were crying, I don't know. And I did not know what was happening in me. Because I didn't know where I was and I didn't know where I was standing. And after, I don't know how long it took, I then realized that, oh, I should join the, the chorus. Then I joined the, the chorus. Oh Lord, I hear you speaking to my heart. You touched me with thy Holy Spirit. Today I taste I, Then I started to join them. When I was joining them, I realized that I was in tears all over. And I never knew exactly. I, became, I, I was a little bit somehow foolish. Uh, I would say, I, I, I just felt so foolish. I didn't know what was happening. So when we sat down, the pastor suddenly came up. He then called me. He said to the congregation, look after this man. I remember his words. Look after this man. You lose this man, you have lost everything. You lose this man, you have lost salvation. 
You lose the smell, you have lost prophets. You lose the smell, you have lost the word. Keep this man. He was speaking to the congregation. But still at that time, it never meant anything. I was very blind. So that's how I was called. Then, to, f to verify that, when I was now moving, transferring from Bedford to other ministries, one ministry which is in uh, Birmingham, so uh, when I was moving to that ministry, uh, I had a vision. God said to me, you are moving from this ministry to that ministry because you are trans since you are transferring. Uh, but this ministry where you are going shall be a stepping stone. As it shall be a step I don't know what he meant by that. I had a little bit of understanding that God speaks, but I never understood the voice. So, okay, this ministry shall be a stepping stone. I never understood that. So I was told, as since you are now moving, on a chair where you used to say, where you used to sit, sorry, there is a road which I gave you. And this road, go and pick it up. Never leave this road. This road must be always with you. So in that vision, I went back into the building in, in, in Bedford, Gate of Heaven Church, in a vision. Went to the seat because I was wondering, I've never seen this road. So when I got there, I looked under the chair, still in a vision. I saw a road which was about a meter or two meters long, which was silver. And it was so silver and glittering to a level that if I'm holding it in front of me, a person who is at a hundred meters will never look at this road. But myself, I would hold it and it never uh, pricked my eyes. So nothing happened but any person would not look at this road at a, at a distance of 100 meters so it was glittering glittering so i took this road with me so i went into this ministry so i grew up in this ministry why is in this ministry i was taught the word a very very powerful word i was taught a lot 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 of things then why is in this ministry i was then told now move it's your time now to move. Rem I, I, I was doubting whether I should move, whether I should stay. I should move, whether I should stay. But God said, remember, when you came into this ministry, you had your certificates already. Go and take your certificates at a tree. You left your, your certificates on a tree. So now in this vision, I was told, you left your certificates on a tree. They are still intact. Go and pick your certificates and move. So then I then left that ministry. When I left that ministry, I then became divine apostolic ministries. It's so sad that I once lived a life which I thought was life, yet I was heading to a wrong direction. Um, living, believing that uh, as a human being, I'm living a natural life like anybody else. Lately did I know that the devil took possession of me years. I experienced these nightmares from a very, very young age. And when I was experiencing them, at times I'll speak to my dad and say, you know what? At times when, I, when I'm asleep, there is a woman whom I cannot see the face, who comes into my bed and sleeps with me. And then my dad will say, no, these are things that happen with boys when you grow. And that even went on even though when I was married. So I lived a life until I thank these two gentlemen. They were God sent to approach me and to speak to me. May the Lord bless you for using you to come and pick me up from this from this from the field of darkness.
being a drunkard. The four Cronenbergs which I had, I eventually threw them over the Chural, smashed them away. I never returned. May the Lord bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen.